Take all the time to set up your TIG machine and your torch perfectly. You run a pass and see some crazy stuff at the start like this? Yuck, I may know what part of the problem is here. Are you flooring the foot pedal right away? Now, what happens when we jump on the foot pedal too fast? When our arc initiates, our arc is already at 100% of the amperage we have programmed on our machine. So this is causing an instability with the tungsten electrode. The tungsten is gonna become unstable and pieces of this tungsten are gonna be ejected into your workpiece and the weld itself. Arc on slowly and just let the puddle establish nice and smooth. After the puddle has established, you can now dig into the heat as as much as you want. Arcing on at a lower amperage with the foot pedal is gonna allow this arc to establish a lot easier. And now we can get into the real heat because our puddle has been established properly. No initial shock to the tungsten. We have no little bits of that splattered here and there. And that electrode we took the time and care to prepare properly is gonna last much longer. If you wanna do awesome looking welding passes like these here, are you able to do ones like these first? You'd be amazed at how people with great ambition aren't even able to get something as simple as this controlled and looking good. This is something that really does need to be learned from the bottom up. I always recommend start with shorter passes that are quite narrow. When I teach people how to TIG weld, we legitimately start out with running passes that are only about an eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimeters wide. They're very narrow. And honestly, some of the longest passes we're gonna go for is gonna be about 25 millimeters or like an inch long or something like that. We're gonna work on keeping things controlled and prevent them from becoming excessively hot. We're gonna look out for signs that indicate everything is turning out nice and shiny. At the point where somebody is comfortably able to perform these and do them perfectly time after time. It will be at this point where we actually do another pass connecting these ones together so we can practice our start stops. This is an extremely important first step. Okay, here's what is really common. Somebody's gonna take a look at their tungsten. They realize it's time to redo this one and start with a fresh one. What most people are gonna commonly do is grab a hammer and they are gonna break the end of the tungsten off. What have I told you? There was a better way to get a fresh start with a clean tungsten so you can start over. And the best part is you don't have to break off and waste so much tungsten. First thing I recommend doing is buzzing about the first couple millimeters or about one eighth of an inch off the tip of your tungsten. Now, after you've buzzed the end of the tungsten off and removed any contamination or cracks on the end of it, what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually gonna grind back a bit of a taper on the tungsten. We're gonna do this lengthwise like you see here. And after grinding it, I will be able to see clearly if there is any cracks or blemishes left over. So what we've done here now has saved us a ton of tungsten. Honestly, we have used about less than half of the tungsten we would have had we have broken it off. Honestly, some of the pieces of tungsten that I have here, I have been using for like over a year. You ever try to add filler material to a tiny little precise puddle and this happens? The overall size of the puddle and the area that the filler material has to go into is extremely small and very crucial to hit properly. When you go to add filler material and it just blobs off on the end like this here, when this happens, all it's gonna do is just get in your way. It's happening to you, it's not a big deal, I got you covered. The most common thing that I see this usually cause this problem is excessive standoff distance or arc length or arc distance. There's a couple names for it. People get mad at me in the comments for that one. So when you're welding and you would increase this distance between the tip of the tungsten and the workpiece, you're gonna create an arc which is not focused properly on the welding area. So what's gonna happen now as we try and add filler material, your arc cone is gonna begin to flicker and lock onto the filler material. This is why it happens, super annoying. Your puddle's gonna become partially oxidized, your filler rod's definitely gonna become oxidized. Just really focus on getting in a little bit tighter, maintain a tighter standoff distance, proper angles, you're gonna be good to go. I've seen it before, check this out. Welding on this one looks pretty good, but take a look at the surrounding area that's been brushed. What if this was left unpainted as a raw aluminum piece? The surrounding area looks like an absolute train wreck, I hate it. But let's take our details with this little thing a step further. Now you see how I have another piece of plate positioned here. What I'm gonna do is use this top plate as a ruler to brush a clean and straight strip parallel to my welding path. I'm also gonna hold it on a bit of an angle like you're looking at here. This is also gonna help to brush the edge of the plate as well as the surface for the one beneath it. So essentially what I'm doing here is wire brushing two plates all at once. Then I remove the top plate that I was using as a ruler and look at how straight the brushed surface to this aluminum is now. The small details like this that most people don't even think about really set people apart as far as the quality of workmanship, not only with their welding, but with all the details of their work in general. <laughs> 